Womp. All right, cool. All right. We're in camera. Okay. Noise. All right. Uh, welcome, ladies, gentlemen, other beings, to Fair Magic, a documentary of three men's journey of discovery in the art of quilting. Uh, no, this is a show where we come up with magically gathered cards and decide whether or not they are, in fact, fair magic. We are doing a double header today. Theme one is Value City USA, cards that get you stuff for free. Oof. Mm-mm-mm. And then after that, we're going to do a Pinterest lightning round where we look at Pinterest art and try and come up with magical cards for it. Uh, Greller, I think you had a pretty dope value card, if I remember correctly. Is it the Artifact Man's? Yeah! Okay, so <clears throat> I want this man to be um, a 3-3 three, three for 3 artifact um, creature type golem. Um, when he enters the battlefield, you discard a card. Oh. And then the secondary ability of um, pay 3 mana, um, return the the golem back to your hand but with the subtext of every time you activate that ability you get to draw a card so you can like pay three mana multiple times and draw a card for every time three mana was you would just say pay three mana return this card to your hand draw a card yes well no because then the cop then the the, return this card no you're right not part of the cost right yeah you just have to you just put a yeah you just put a a period in in there there. yeah Three mana colon return this card to your hand. Draw, draw cards. Card. Period. Yes. Draw a card. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that would be, and then you just pay that That'd be fine. X amount of time. So yeah. you have like an initial detriment of discarding a card, which some decks, depending on the format, can turn into a slight advantage, or at least uh, something that doesn't cost as much. And then eventually, it's card advantage. So I think it's fair, yeah. but I like good. It. That's playable for sure. Like fair what magic. It, what is it? That lightning axe out of like Eldritch Moon or whatever. Or? It's if you discard it, you yeah, pay yeah, one yeah, red. Yeah, it's yeah. Red. Pay one red and lightning bolt something. So for a turn four, you get a three three and lightning bolt something. Oh, yeah, it's pretty that, good for sure. Yeah, no, it sounds good. Okay, here's the one I came up with. Uh, it's based off of what's the what's the card? The Gibbons. Hidden Gibbons. Hidden Gibbons. So this is my take on Hidden Gibbons for the modern era. Uh, it is an enchantment, one blue and two colorless, and uh, I think it'll have a name like Calm Waters, and then. Uh, if three or more creatures attack you, sacrifice this enchantment and create an 8 8 Leviathan token. Kind of like an Oath of Druids. I like that. Like, yeah. But with propaganda. And also, super easy to get around. They can just beat you with two, two fatties dudes, yeah. all day. That's pretty nice. It's, I think it's pretty fair, but it's definitely eight, a, eight good might be a little prison big. card. Yeah, it's. 8-8's huge, and it's like a prison well, effect. Cause... I think the 8-8 eight eight is still fair, because, I mean, you have cards like um, Defense of the Heart, where if they have more than three creatures during your upkeep, like some in some decks you just win the game, in other decks you just get two gross guys. So, I mean, the fact that... Those, but those cards are pushed. Like, yeah. you're c- comparing a Defense of the Heart, that card is broken if anybody True. ever lets that go off. But the difference between that card and this card is it allows you to have more than... Um, you know, two creatures in play, you can just only beat with two. So that's why I think it's fair. All right, I get, I'm going to push it a little bit more. It also has an activated ability. Two blue and two target creature attacks this turn of Fable. I think that is too good. That's too good? That's too good. Try to get an 8-8 eight, eight for 12? <laughs> um, it's Well, it would be nine, good. wouldn't it, if it's three per? So you just, you, I guess total, but... yeah. You, you could, you could I was saying two blue and two. Easily. That's not terrible. So it, if it was funny. two blue and two, it would be 12 mana to get an 8-8 Kraken token, which isn't even that good. It's pretty, it's pretty I guess nice. it's still pretty fair. I think it's fair. All right. And nobody's, it just slows down the early beats, and if they have a way to get bounce a token or something, you know. Sweet. Yeah, true. Fair fair magic just shuts it down. All right, what do you got for <clears> us? You know what I got. <laughs> what, you, what you got? It's a blue and one. No! <laughs> a 1-1 one, one flyer. Cool. <laughs> He's got Caca. Mind Shrieker's ability. You should, if you listen to this podcast, you should just have Mind Shrieker's <laughs> ability is a keyword now for us. Yeah. <laughs> Mind Shrieker's ability. <laughs> and yes. then whenever this creature attacks, uh, bounce target creature unless opponent an opponent plays one mana. Ooh, four spike bounce your dude. I like that. A little crystal I love shard that. action. A little one with little still with his little action. Like, yeah, like you have to leave. Like you're kind of yeah. taxing him a little bit on the swing. Oh, you see, what I thought you were gonna say for the mind shrieker was uh, same as mind shrieker, but instead of a mana, a, 
like a mana cost, it does Mind Trigger's ability once for That's free. That's pretty dope, too. I like that. But that seems kind of powerful because then now I feel like it's a better Mind Shrieker. Yeah. No, not as much top end, but for free? Sometimes you do can't swing your one one into stuff if you don't have enough mana open with regular mind trigger and you make him a make him a make him a O one. <laughs> I don't know if that's value stuff. anymore. I just um, want yeah, little tax, a little one mana tax when he bounces one target creature. Yeah, that's that's turbo value. And then you play like four of those things and you're just swinging oh with mind triggers all day. It's so broken. <laughs> you want to pay three? No, pick that guy up. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Then you can play him with mana wars and stuff too. That would be good in the standard environment. I think yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. A little standard card. Yeah. Oh, I got another one for you. And this is all, all my ideas come from Keyforge, which has a lot of really interesting ways of trying to control your opponent's next turn. Like Nexus, uh, we're having the first crossover event where there's a Keyforge card on the Magic play mat right now. Dun, 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 dun. Anyway, um, Counterspell, two blue and three, counter target spell. Uh, if the If your opponent has cast at least three spells this turn... Uh, you can cast it for free. I I like that. Or I mean, at that, least two. That's I mean, mind break trap is that, isn't it? Isn't that mind break trap? Um, I don't it's, remember. Mind break trap is if an opponent has cast three or more spells in a turn. It's a, it costs zero mana and no. it exiles everything on the stack. No, I invented mind break trap. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a five mana normal, and then for free if they cast three or more spells. I mean, to be no, fair. it's four, it's four mana. It's two blue and. Two for a four man instant exile target spell. Yeah. Exile all spells on the stack. That card is a very fair it was card. Though. Only a matter of time very fair until this card. happened. It was good when Storm first popped up in Modern. When Modern first became a thing, Storm was everywhere. Like yep. it was, they, none of the rituals were banned. Can all the like one mana draw spells. Like people just went nuts. It was Dragon Storm too. Not even like grape shotting people. You were just slamming huge Bogard and Hellkites. You're like, I stormed Dragon Storm. I'll go get four Bogard and Hellkites. Shoot I you for twenty. Can you like, say that you wouldn't if that hadn't been invented yet? For the very first time, you could just I mean, cast a jillion spells and then get a get bunch hosed. of dragons. Um, yeah, it was it was hilarious. I would absolutely do that. That's the first awesome. time I played in that format, I played a mono red deck that played four mind break traps, straight Ooh. blue spell. It just played it right out of the board because all the stuff. And I drew two of them against this dude, and he just had to scoop it up. He's like, "There's no way I'm eating through Ugh. two mind break traps." No. <laughs> like, <laughs> all right. Do we anyway. got any more value cards? Um, I kind of like green dudes that play off of landfall abilities. Oh. So what if you have like a four drop three three, that if you have a more than two lands enter during a turn he you, he makes like a two two or a three three, like that would be good. That is pretty nice. You have to play around like being able to play multiple lands in a turn and keep your land ramp going and get little incremental three three value out of it. What if he had just regular landfall? But started by giving you like a zero one. Oh, and you just upgraded just, through the ranks. Yeah. You upgrade it by one. Uh, you get power a plant. You get a sapperling. Yeah. He could be like Wait, a. What? It's like, like a reef worm. Then it's well, two, yeah. Well, like they, they already three, have three. creatures that are yeah. kind of like always these certain powers. Like O ones are plants generally, or something in green. Then saplings are usually one ones. Oh, I would love to see. I can't wait to write two, two this bear. gigantic text box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bother with it. Just some stuff happens. <laughs> Landfall. <laughs> question stuff. mark. Question mark. Question mark. <laughs> All right, let's move on to uh, looking at these freaky pictures you got set up over here for All us. All right, so these are pictures from my Pinterest, which will be added in post for you guys. Uh, I do pin like if you don't do Pinterest to get art for D and D stuff, I don't know what you're doing because uh, it's is that a black fantastic. mage crab? So this is my first candidate. <laughs> that thing's blue black as hail. Uh, yes. This is from Chiro Stenotes One Two Three DeviantArt.com is the source. I'm trying to credit all the artists for this and let me know if uh, I need to change anything or pronounce things correctly. Okay. All right. Uh, so we got some uh, sort of a bulbous creature i feel like he's probably going to be a one one he just reminds me of a black mage from final fantasy 7 so he's like a blue black crab <laughs> yep. that kind of like baleful strix maybe i know what i would make it i would make it a um three or four mana brain maggot so it would be a one one it would be a blue black and two but whatever card you uh brain maggot you may cast for, for, oh um, so it's like gonti yeah, it's it's exactly like Gaunti. So you'd still have to pay the mana cost, but if you don't have the right mana, you could tap uh, lands to make any color when you're casting it. Yep. So like at minimum, it just brain maggots their stuff for a turn unless they kill it. 
Or you can just have a bunch of mana yes, and that, cast it. And, that's super fair, the fact that yeah. they can get the card back if you don't cast it fast yeah. enough. Correct. Unlike I, Gonti, where you just get to sit on the card for the rest yeah. of the game no matter what. Uh, here's my take on this dude. Uh, I feel like he looks like one of those bad guys that explodes in video games. He does. Yeah, so he how does. about this? Like a brain maggot, but then it when he dies, he deals that much damage equal to the CMC of the exiled card to each creature. I like that. But I would say loss of life if we make it blue-black, but yeah. I, I agree with you. What Sweet. about... If when this brain maggot dies, you get to cast a spell instead of having to cost mana. What? Oh man! And he's a one-one. That would be, one, one? That would just, be yeah, spicy. Make him like, yeah, exactly. So you have to like, either you start beating down with him, or you leave him back as a blocker, and then depending on what he grabs out of your hand, I, like, I think you him, should like, make a him a legend. Blocker. You should make him a legend, but you have to make it like child, where like it actually has to go to the graveyard for you yeah, to so, cast it. So it can't so be just an annoying commander. Zone, yeah. yeah, I would. All right, so blue black brain maggot legendary general creature. Yes. And uh, he's got a pimp hat on also in post. All right, cool. Mm, mm, mm. All right, next one. Let's try uh, this guy. We got a real big Leviathan from science fiction world. .tumblr.com. This just looks like magic cards that already exist. Yeah. He's like a snail kraken almost. Or snail Leviathan. I'm going to think like a 9 9 probably. Is that like a shell on his back? Is that what that is? What is I that big got, white like, thing? Faces. Is he like just a bubble? That's, that's like, that looks like a big either a s s big snail shell or some type of big. I think he's just got a big old head. Big old bubble. I think he's just a head. I know what I would make him. Oh, I'm looking at it at a different angle now. Okay. I, I would make him a five <laughs> mana zero eight that costs um two blue and three of any color, and he enters with three uh, shell counters. Right? Sweet. And you could pay four mana to remove a shell counter and put it on a creature, and then you mind control that creature while, oh. the, sh while the shell counter's on it. But Sweet. it'll be like any other counter where you can, if you have a hex parasite, you can remove it. All right, I'm I'm envisioning some kind of. Uh, I really want a blue black legendary that is a telepathy effect. So like. Did you just look at their hands? Yeah. Okay. So like, uh, make him like a eight-eight Leviathan when it comes into play. Each player plays with their hands open, and then maybe some effect where you, people can cast each other's spells or, or something. Opponents play with their hands revealed. Oh. Yeah, yeah, just forever as a stagnant ability. That's probably the best way to do it. I would take that eight-eight yeah. for eight menace. Uh, opponents play with their hands open. Done. Sure. I would play that general. That would be sweet. It's pretty fair. Like. He doesn't break the game. He doesn't give you a huge advantage other than you get to peek. Everybody gets to peek at their opponent's cards now, too. So Big that, brain. It helps a lot against people who are playing against combo decks. Like, you get to see how far they are towards, like, achieving their one-turn goal. I'm about it. All right. I saw, this, I saw this creature in a completely different way at first. So, like, you see the little, like, red parts down there like yeah. that? So that's its mouth, but it's, like, sideways and canted like this. And the eyes are, like, up here on top of it. Yeah. Right? That's an eye. And then down... No, that's the anyway. So and then the back of that big thing was like the back of its head. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought it was like coming at us like diagonally sideways. Like, this yeah, I, I think it is supposed to be that, but it does also kind of look like maybe there's just a sphere back there. Yeah. I it think. Well, I mean, it is a sphere like back a there. Glowing brain. Yeah. Almost. I think honestly, I think that's on purpose. I think the artist was good enough that they want to be like, I want some ambiguity in this part. So I think it's good job, that guy. All right, we're gonna switch to a different Pinterest now. Awesomely creepy. Uh. This part may or may not be here due to the powers of editing. This is all going to be cut, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, oh, go yeah, nuts. yeah, yeah. Liar. <laughs> <laughs> do something super embarrassing. <laughs> I do lie about that. I do have footage. All right. Uh, let's try this one here. Oh, yeah. There's a specific guy I want to show you, but he's like a little bit down. Dun, 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 dun. All right. So that's this a, is uh, that's a Pokemon. <laughs> it does look like a Pokemon. Right. Sapperling Bomb Maker. Real quick, I got to go back to the other Pinterest, and I'm gonna save all these tabs for later. Yeah, we got him. Okay, cool. All right, we're back in it. That all got cut. Uh, we we're looking at uh, an image from h u a b a n dot com. Uh, some sort of small grape collecting creature. They look like bombs to me. <laughs> it's got bombs. He's like some type of green creature that comes with bomb counters then you can pay two to remove a bomb counter to like shoot something for one it's like a really weird crappy siege gang commander 
So wait, he's a green. Cru- Say that again. He's like he looks like he's holding bombs or something. He's got like some type of nature bomb, some type of oil. I don't know. He could put. Oh, he could throw like minus one, minus one counters on things or something. Comes in with like two bomb counters or pay two to the put a minus vendor. one, minus one counter on the target creature. I like it. I don't know how much man he costs like three for a one one or something like that that has that yes. ability. I was I saw him as like a hybrid blue green. Uh, tap, and he comes with three grape counters. And you could tap, put a grape on another creature, and then that creature can't attack you. Oh, he throws them like the wine container. He gets <laughs> some Zeno <laughs> counters. Like Creature too drunk to attack. All right, what do you think, Jeremy? Well, I'd like him to enter with grape counters and be a 1-1 one, one for three, two green, and one. But I was going to say uh, have him the ability to to tap himself to remove a grape counter and gain you a life. Aw. That's nice. He's like your little friend. He's take taking a drink, oh, take a helping sip. Helping you out. He's like he's take a, a sip of this wine and, and gain a life. It's just tap, is that what you said? Yeah, yeah just tap. Yeah, him. that seems yeah. It's like any mana would be yes. absurd. Maybe it's two life if you add like one mana and tap sure. him. Sure. Alright. I feel like this is gonna be a challenging one. Man. What am I looking at here? It's just a bunch of Leviathans like fit all in underneath a tiny boat under a flat surface. <laughs> I feel like that's art for the boat, and it has protection from Leviathans. This like, from they can't even get to him. TheMetaPicture.com. <laughs> nice. So I feel like that's definitely an, an enchantment of some kind. You could just make it really shitty and be like, Leviathans, Octopi, and Kraken can't attack you. Blah. It does seem like that like protection. For, that boat is just fine. All The, the, the terrors <laughs> of the deep just can't touch this man. They don't even care. I, I see, like, a five-mana sorcery, two blue and three... Make all of um, target players' creatures 8 8 Leviathans with Island Walk until end of turn. Ooh. All right, I got one for you. Uh, it's a. Call it a four mana enchantment. And it. Well, let's make it like really high. It's like a seven mana enchantment, and it has the text uh, Leviathans, Octopi, and Kraken can't attack. And then for four mana, you can search your library for a Leviathan, Octopi, or Kraken and put it in the play. And then for another seven, you can sacrifice this enchantment. So you, like, build a huge board that can like attack. It. I think you could lower the cost of sacrificing it, though. I think you could probably make it, like, four. Yeah, you're right. I'd just like to give a shout-out to Future Will while you <laughs> put that card together. What's up, that. buddy? Hope it's, hope your day's going all right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we've experienced the quantum leap in my editing technology because I found one button on VDSC, so. Shed a, you one, have a, the power. A moment of time for, a moment of uh, silence for all the time wasted. All right, that was good. You're going to have to edit that silence out, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll make it longer. I'll just pause just make it longer. Yeah. And stretch it out. All right, what about this guy? That thing is creepy and awesome. I think he's cute. It does have a little, like, puppy dog look to it. He's got, like, a weird uh, pug face. He's got six legs. This is from VK.com. That thing is some type of gargoyle. I feel like he does hound or something. I feel like he does LD somehow. I Ooh, I want like him to have butt the rock breathing. muncher. Yeah, I want him to have butt breathing, like fire breathing yeah. for red, but for toughness instead. Ooh, I like that. Make him like a two three for three. Two three for three, butt breathing, and he deals when he's blocking. He deals damage with his toughness. Yes, yes, please. That's insane. I love it, dude. I got one for you here. Double That's red up. and three. He's a three three. <laughs> With butt breathing. He's Ogre oh. Arsonist with butt breathing. And when he it. enters the battlefield, he blows up a land. Yes. Woo! So Story good. Story target land. What a good boy. It. He's straight out of portal, but we just slap butt breathing on him. He seems super fair. <laughs> what a good boy. The rock muncher. He just looks so happy, He just comes man. and eats on your stuff. Ow. Looks so happy. Digging in your garden. All right. How are we feeling? We do, we want to do like one more? Yeah, I, got uh, more. I got one more in me. We could do one I like that. Was that a shark man with a spear? That's going to be too obvious. I like that crazy shade looking thing on the right. Oh yeah, let's get a what is that? This guy right here? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that one. It's a horrible cyclops centipede centipede monster. Goodness yeah. gracious. You it's can like tell Goro. The, you know what you can tell immediately from looking at this art? That motherfucker has haste. Yeah. <laughs> He's going places. I would make him a Rakdos creature. Black red for sure. Um no. He's got all these grabby hands. What? I kind of want to make a mono black, but you go ahead and 
Bottom Keep black has haste. Well, I, I was gonna say I, I wasn't gonna give him haste. I got something for you. I would, oh boy! I would give him haste, and I would make him a four-four with haste for six. Uh, but when he attacks, um, your opponent can't block this turn. Whoa! So you just he just gets in there with everything else, and he takes all of his hands, and he like pins people down. He's like, not, not today. That's brutal. You should, you should get in there for a bunch. <laughs> all right, Brian. What's your idea? Uh, he's like a four drop nine nine with trample. Oh boy! But if he did not enter play from your graveyard, you have to discard uh, your entire hand. <laughs> oh my god! I love that. I would play it. I would absolutely because you get that. punished if they immediately just kill him. You're like, no, <laughs> <laughs> I have no hand. I'm top decking like crazy. But Jokes you, on you. you I get, wanted my hand to the graveyard. And then you, yeah, Dude, I mean, there's, you built that would that be its would build be, around mechanics. So it would be kind of right. good. In is he own. is he mono black? I would say he's like in your version. Yeah, he'd be at least black. two black, <gasps> and yeah, he's at least two, so maybe three instantly, and one. Instantly, instantly into rolls. Instantly into legacy, where oh you just like God. try to dark rit that man out, and you like just pray that they don't have exactly. any removal. You're like, please just let me. Or win. force of will, or, you know, or days. <laughs> You're like, ah. All right. That would no. That dude. He. That was kind of thinking legacy style with that kind of effect. I mean, it would be fair if it's when he enters the battlefield, you discard your hand because then if they counter it, they don't have to discard their hand. So, I mean, yeah, that's be, what I mean. If he really enters, that's what I think. That's what I said. If yeah. it if it enters the battlefield and it wasn't from your graveyard, yeah. then that would, that would you be have decent against. Does he have any keywords? Trample. Okay. Nine oh, nine oh, trample heck for yeah, four. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's. I would. Yeah. I mean, he's. 100%. That's. I think it's fair, but it's also. Value can, can be really gross. Huge like, risk. Yeah, it could be a pushed card. I don't know. Depends on all the cards that are in the f- the set around around it. You know. Do you want to do one more? I kind of do. I I really want to do one more. Just pick pick a good one. So I want to say the demonic tunneler. You can you can take a second. I want yeah. I want a good one. Oh, we haven't done a humanoid guy yet. No, we haven't. What about this guy? Oh wow, he looks interesting. We got a bug man. He's got like a weird fleshy backpack and some tech technomagology in his hand. Like a blue artifact creature. Artifact like, creature. Ooh. I was thinking like a bee lord. Blue green artifact creature. <laughs> Insect lord. Insect lord. Yeah. I think you could go with blue green, and I, I kind of want to play on a new mechanic here. So right. I'd say, make him a two-two for four, uh, with an, the ability B creatures you control get plus one plus one, but you also give him adapt. Uh, and when you adapt him, um, you get a single B, and he gets a plus one plus one counter. And you have to spend four mana, but you can do it more than one time. You can Ooh. do it as many times as you'd like. I was going to say, when you adapt and bees get death touch. That'd be that'd be spicy. So uh, playing off of that, I was thinking he would be a lord for like bees, insects, and like all of those little like crappy, like, yeah. so like Hornet Queen, whatever she makes. She makes bees, I guess, right? Or does she make insects? I don't remember. She makes, uh... oh man, I think she makes insects. Yeah, I think she does. Believe it or yeah. not. So I think he'd be like a lord for all those. For and insects. he would also give all of those creature types evolve. Evolve. This the, isn't that the, we play a creature bigger than it, yes. they all get they counters. All get bigger? Yeah, ah. and he'd be like a five or six drop that he's pretty easy to kill. He'd have to be like a one, two, or a two, three or something. Oh my God, yeah, that would be absolutely brutal. Evolve for everyone? All of your insect, all of your those token creatures. So you'd have to like build those up, stick him, and then play another creature after it. Like, there's plenty of time to interact uh, with that. Uh, I have one request. Make him either Sultai or not white. No, like, he wouldn't be white, yeah. E- yeah. Every other color, just so you can maximize the amount of insects you can stuff into that jank-ass deck. Oh, yeah, yeah it, would be be nice. all, it would all be like green and mostly green. I know there's like <laughs> a couple of weird red insect heaters, but like... <laughs> Also black. Like. Wait, how does Hornet Cannon work? <laughs> it's an artifact. Yeah, I know. Doesn't it like give remember. people hornets or something? <laughs> <laughs> no the deep brain dive if I can get there quickly. <laughs> no. That's okay. I'll find one more. Hornet Cannon. I'm down for one more. Bees, boy. Big bees. <laughs> Big bees. Beautiful bees. Big, oh man, this guy. Three mana tap. Put a 1 1 colorless insect artifact oh, creature yeah. tugging with flying in haste. Let's do this. Absolutely. Named Hard Hornet playable. onto the battlefield. Destroy Just, it at the beginning of the next end step. Oh my gosh, that's bad. Woo. That's terrible. Let's do this absolutely terrifying image to close out on. Okay. 
Okay. It is a yeah. woman who is taking off a kimono, and also her face, and also her hands or tentacles. Is this in Grixis or what? Just this like color Sandu, <laughs> SanduDeviantArt.com made this. Uh, yeah, no. So this is some sort of, uh, probably like a changeling, right? I was going to say like horrifying mimic or something. Ooh, like. I know what I'd do for this. I'd make it uh, five mana. Three of it would be like split color mana where it could be either blue or black. And then two. Uh, and I'd make it a one three. And when it enters the battlefield, you target an instant or sorcery in any person's graveyard. And then it can cast that by tapping it. Ooh. What? You just pick one, though? Yeah, you can only pick one when it enters the battlefield, and that's it. That's pretty You dope. can abuse it with, like, blink effects, but I still think as a card itself it would be fair. You'd have to build around it. All right, here's the concept I have for this one, and it's a little out there. Uh, I don't know what colors it would be. Probably Grixis, maybe green. It's like an EDH bait in general. Okay. Uh, so it's, okay. Definitely Grixis, possibly also green. All right. It has, uh, for like four mana, gain control of target creature. Ooh. And then it has uh, spells you control have emerge. Their emerge cost is their CMC, or their mana cost. Nice. So you just like yeah. steal people's stuff and make it explode into your own stuff. I would make it five colors. Yeah. I'd make it five colors for sure. This thing reminds me of like a puppet master for some reason. Yeah. So I was thinking kind of like gain control of a target creature as well. So I was thinking it'd be Grixis and one for a bestow creature, but you bestow it on somebody else's creature and they can't, that creature can't attack you or deal damage to you. And whenever it dies, that thing, it obviously it'll be bestowed. So it's like a, it's like a, it's like a, bestow. it's a pacifism basically that when that creature finally dies, you get a dude. Yes. I like that. That's pretty dope. It like takes control of it and it like doesn't let it attack you. And then when they finally like if they sack it for some cost or something, they're like, "All right, sweet, I get like a three three flyer or something." But when that man dies, or sorry, when that lady dies, you get her back to your hand. Yep. So it would be a rare or a mythic return. Yeah, just so it's just either like a super cheap pacif- pacifism general, yeah. which would be pretty cool. Or alternatively, you oh, can... I wasn't even thinking legendary. That's pretty good too. Like, yeah, I was thinking I want, legendary. She looks like a general to me. So. Yeah, same here. That makes sense. Yeah, I also would be down with her being like an oath where like you bestow her on somebody else and make that creature dope, but it can't attack you, and then she comes back. Yeah, you could get, make it bigger and it can't attack you. That's even better. Yeah, I like that. It's like it turns, it takes control of something, makes it buffer, and then they're like trying to swing it at stuff, and then when you, when it finally dies, you get it back. It's and like then EDH gold right there. Oh. And then you have any way to return her that's to your hand. Do. That's and all when I she know. dies, she bounces to your hand. So yeah, and then you too. sack her for mana and get her back to your hand. Man. EDH is the truth. Ten out of ten would play. All right, sweet. Uh, I think that's all we got for today. Seems right. Yep. Uh, let's see. Join us next week when I do a video tutorial on how to cut fiberglass. Dude, I thought I was trying to show you how to like oil up your saddle. <laughs> <laughs> that's the week after next. Oh, my bad. Stick to the scripts. All right. See you guys next week.